some people and some farmers. So once again, uh, beloved Akka, namaste uh, to you all. Uh, it's good to uh, see you all here in all good spirits, all eager to uh, get back into your business that you normally do. And the business is agriculture. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, you must have heard me uh, speaking uh, at various forums or in parliament or in meetings here. So in Natambe, we had some meeting uh, sometime back in Natambe, also in Langalanga. <coughs> And I said that we want agriculture to be treated as a business. We want agriculture to be treated as a business. <clears throat> this is a call by this government and by this country because of the importance of agriculture to our economy. Agriculture is one ministry. Agriculture is one sector <coughs> that can provide sustainable growth sustainable development and be the backbone of Fijian economy and Fijian society. It is one sector which can reach out to every individual in this country, whether it's a farmer, whether it's a business sector, corporate sector, manufacturing service, every sector of the economy is linked to agriculture sector. Therefore, any growth that happens in, the, in this particular sector, agriculture sector, its multiplier effect will take place to all the sectors of the economy and therefore the entire economy will grow. The agriculture sector is linked to the other sectors through the factor market in economics we say to the inputs, labor market and also to the product market. When agriculture sector grows you will need more land, more labor, more raw materials. So whoever supplies labor, they will benefit. Whoever supplies land, they will benefit the landowners. Whoever supplies raw materials, they will benefit. So when the agriculture sector grows, there's a number of other industries that will also grow with agriculture. And when agriculture sector grows, that surplus that is created, the revenue that is generated, it'll be spent on the rest of the economy the farmers, the business, agriculture entrepreneurs, they will take that money and spend. <clears throat> and therefore the other sectors where the money is spent will also grow. So agriculture sector is connected to the rest of the economy and therefore agriculture sector must grow for the economy to grow. And every country, every nation's desire is for agriculture to grow. If you look at Fiji's agriculture sector, there are several, sec several <coughs> <coughs> enterprises that has huge potential. <coughs> and we are now putting a lot of emphasis on growth of these enterprises within agriculture. For example, rice. We want to grow rice sector in this country. At the moment, we are producing only about 15% of rice that we consume. The entire rice, 85% of rice is imported. Now, our philosophy in agriculture is that if we can't grow rice, if we don't have the technical capacity, knowledge, then we will not grow rice. We don't want to grow everything. We don't have an import substitution policy. We don't have that. But we know that we have the technical capacity, technical advantage, the technical know-how to grow rice. And that is why you have seen <coughs> we have now started to expand rice production in Fiji. Primarily, rain-fed rice because it is less labor intensive, it requires less input, it's short term, three months, high yielding, and therefore high return. So we are now going very aggressively promoting rice production in Fiji. 
And we want this area, Wainikoro, to be one of those leading sectors in rice production. We will give you the rice seeds, the high yielding two new varieties, <coughs> Dangibebo and Sitara. We will give you the seed material, planting material. We will give you the harvester to harvest. And we will buy the rice from you through Fiji Rice Limited. We have talk, spoken to them. All you need to do is grow rice. Make sure you do the necessary weeding, look, look after the rice uh, <coughs> crop. And I want to assure you, it's one of those crops that is very high yielding and a good high return. You can have two crop per year. You can have three crop per year, three month crop. And therefore, your net return will be much, much higher, much, much <coughs> higher than some of the standard crops that you are growing. So we want to invite you, we want to invite you to get into rice farming. In Northern Division, we'll be promoting Yangona, Dalo, cassava, <coughs> rice, pulses, and livestock. <coughs> For all these, <coughs> we will provide the market. We will buy it from you. You don't have to look for the market. You don't have to look for the market. We will buy it from your farm gate. Or we'll tell you where to just drop it in. We want to grow pulses. We are importing. 80% of pulses that we consume in Fiji is imported. We can grow pulses here. And we'll support you, we'll provide you with the seedling once, the first time. After that you maintain your own seed. <coughs> so ladies and gentlemen, very exciting, exciting times ahead for agriculture sector. But we want you to pull your full 100% energy into agriculture, in farming. We cannot support leisure farmers, part-time farmers, farmers who are emotionally attached to the land. We want full-time commercial farmers. Today, this is a follow-up meeting to the earlier meeting we held in Natambe where I promised to you that we will provide you with fencing material to fulfill your and our objective of promoting livestock production in this country. The three subsectors within livestock that we are actively, vigorously promoting, and that is beef cattle, dairy cattle, and sheep. Because of the importance in consumption and importance to the economy. Beef cattle, we are producing only 80% of the total requirement. We're importing 40% beef from outside. Dairy, 85% of dairy products are imported from New Zealand and Australia. Sheep, lamb meat, 99% of lamb meat that we consume is imported. 99%. And we've got such a good arable pasture that we can grow sheep here. We can raise sheep here. And that is why we are now actively promoting livestock production. And we want you to come into livestock production. <coughs> now, to move small farmers who are having 10 goats, 10 sheep, 8 sheep, etc., they need paddocks. They need to have paddocks. So then they can expand. And it is for that reason that we are providing you today a package consists of fencing material, pine post, and new nail for you to start off. And once, you see, once we see you performing well in four to five years time, we may come back and if we have resources, we will provide you with some more fencing material to expand your number of paddocks. Now with this material that we're gonna hand over to you today, you can have three to four paddocks. Three to four paddocks. So we are very excited, and I'm sure you all are very excited with this initiative. And I'm sure that you will be energized. You uh, will look forward to quickly getting these paddocks done on your farm. And <clears throat> we do hope that you will expand your base stock. 
you need to expand your base stock. Our monitoring team will monitor, will come and look at, uh, see how you're doing. We will give you technical advice, we will support you, but we want to see visibly that you are really expanding livestock production. So um, uh, it's, it's a government initiative. Government wants to see uh, livestock sector expanding so that we are able to save the money that we are paying to outside countries for importation of uh, livestock products. And I do hope that you, know, you will take advantage of this and expand your, uh, your, uh, whether you have a sheep farm or goat farm. So with this word, ladies and gentlemen, uh, thank you very much for coming here today. And we look forward to uh, handing out to you the offer letter for you to pick up the uh, fencing material from the respective uh, uh, vendor. Thank you. Naka. Naka.